Hi friends. I'm gonna share a little bit of a story with you. May is Huntington's Disease Awareness Month and that is important to me. I have shared very generally um, and occasionally on Huntington's disease in my life, um, on my social media and, and whatnot. Um, but I've never shared many details or why it's important to me. Um, Huntington's disease, if you are not familiar with it, which don't worry, a lot of people aren't. Um, it is a rare disease. It's a genetic disease and it's a neurological disease. Um, it affects motor skills, cognition, brain function, pretty much everything. Um, some people have likened it to um, it like having symptoms of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS all at the same time. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details about exactly what and how and all the, you know, scientific medical stuff because there's plenty of other people and resources out there that are going to do that a lot better than me. So, um, Google away if you are so inclined. Um, the Huntington's Disease Society of America is a fantastic resource. Um, but... I've participated in fundraisers for Huntington's um, every year for a lot of years now. I've shared a little bit when those fundraisers come up um, and that's that's kind of about it. And this last year of my life, I have been working on myself um, physically, mentally, um, unpacking a lot of baggage, um, getting rid of a lot of baggage, um, some physical baggage, some mental baggage. And um, I just, I've been feeling this pull that it's time to share this piece of my story. I've shared a lot of my story lately. And this is one piece that I have not, not shared um, if asked in person, but I haven't got out of my way to share. And that's kind of been I've been feeling a pull that um, if I could if I could help somebody by sharing this piece of my story, then that's really important. The thing about Huntington's disease, especially you can relate to this if this is the first time you're hearing about it or you've heard the word maybe, but you have no idea what it means. Um, it is, like I said, it is a rare disease. It is a, um, you know, it's not it's not super, it's not like Parkinson's. Um, you know, there are famous people that have it, Woody Guthrie. Um, but not, um, you know, not to the level that some of the other diseases reach. Um, it's kind of a hidden disease. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it in their families when they have it, um, which is another reason for not a lot of awareness. Um, because Huntington's disease commonly starts later in life for um, a lot of people, not all people, but um, a lot of people, it starts in the second half of their life as far as showing symptoms. Um, a lot of people end up not knowing about it and it seems to just appear in their families because maybe um, a loved one before them was pa passed before they were diagnosed or um, were undiagnosed or di misdiagnosed. So, um, there's a lot of fear associated with it. There's a lot of shame associated with it. Um, with affecting the motor symptoms, a lot of people um, can be mistaken as drunk or high or um, other some sort of, you know, substance abuse when really it's the disease. So there's just a lot of silence in, um, you know, in families where where this happens and is found and I think silence also produces fear. Um, there's been a lot more awareness about it in the last decade. Um, there's been a lot more research on it and um, a lot more um, hope in that regard but there's still work to do and I am feeling like I need to be a bigger part of that work that needs to be done. Um, there is currently no cure for Huntington's disease um, and there is no treatment to stop progression of symptoms. There is some treatment for some symptoms. Um, basic things 
but there's no long-term treatments and there is no cure. So, why am I sharing, you know, why am I sharing all of this again? Um, if you're still with me, thanks for hanging on. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. So, about, I want to say nine years now. Has it been nine years? Yeah, about nine, eight and a half. I'll call it eight and a half years ago. Um, I went through genetic testing to get tested for Huntington's disease gene. Um, there is a genetic test if you have the gene um, and a certain repeat of the gene. So everybody has, you know, everybody has the gene. I'm not going to get into the science again, but everybody has the gene. Um, it's if you have too many repeats of the gene, you may, you will at some point have symptoms and have the disease. Um, so I went through genetic testing um, because I knew it was in my family. I grew up around Huntington's disease. I grew up in this community. Um, my grandma had Huntington's disease and my family um, was her primary caregiver towards the end of her life. So we knew about it. Um, my family participated in fundraisers. There was a golf outing every year. Um, and we just knew that that was just something that our family did. We did an HD golf outing. Um, and so, um, my mom has been a support group leader for many, many, many years for a Huntington's disease support group. So I've grown up with it. I knew about it my whole life. I also knew that there was a possibility that I could have it for a very large part of my life for as long as I can remember. So, um, I went through that testing. And in December of 2012, I received a positive test result, which means that I have too many repeats of the Huntington's gene and I will get Huntington's at some point. I am asymptomatic um, at 33 years old. I had to think about that. Um, I'm asymptomatic, which means I don't have any symptoms. Um, and I am extremely grateful that my repeat is not super high. Um, there is some correlation to the number of repeats and the age that you will get it, being that um, if you have higher repeats, you may get it sooner. So I'm super grateful to not have um, a, a huge expansion of repeats, but it is in the zone where I will get, um, have symptoms and get the disease at some point in my life. Um, so that was a lot. Um, that was December of 2012 and it is now May of 2021. A lot has happened in my life since then, good things and bad things. Um, and it's taken me about eight and a half years to unpack this thing that I've been hanging on to. Um, when I got my test results, I was not surprised. I was expecting a positive result. I can't tell you why. There's no logical reason um, for, for that. Um, other than that was just my brain at the time. Um, I expected it. I got it. I took it. Um, I put it in a little box and I packed it away inside and I was fine. Um, and I continued to be fine. Um, I am the kind of person that does not want to cause trouble or heartache or difficulty for other people. Um, I want to make other people happy. I am a serial people pleaser. <laughs> um, it's something I'm working on. Um, at least the too much of it. Um, I think, I think there's some positive in wanting to please other people, but I think too much of it can be a very bad thing. And at that time I had too much of it. 
Um, so for me, being fine with it and putting it away and not dealing with it was a way of showing strength um, and being strong on the outside. Um, you know, I didn't really realize until the last couple years how much not dealing with that um, affected me. Um, you know, when you go through genetic testing, um, and I don't know if this is all genetic testing, but I know for Huntington's disease testing, you have to go through, um, if you do it the right way, which I highly recommend you do it the right way, you go through um, several sessions of, um, you'd go through some counseling, you meet with a neurologist, um, you go through more counseling, you get your drop blood drawn, you go through more counseling, and then you get your results. Um, and I did all the steps, I checked all the boxes. I really wasn't, I know my heart was not into it. I was not into the counseling. Um, I didn't really, I just needed to know. Um, at that time in my life, I was more, I was more obsessed and um, just frozen with not knowing. Because remember in my head, I had already decided that I had it. And so I just kind of felt like I couldn't move. I couldn't make decisions. I had this big question mark hanging over my head. So I thought, well, once I know for sure, then I can make some decisions, right? Right, okay. Well, that's all great in theory, but in reality, um, I should have done a lot more in-depth counseling post test result. Um, you know, I just operated and that's really, that's really what I did. I just operated. I did the daily things that I needed to do. And I just was what I thought would, the answer that I thought would give me the ability to make decisions and move forward ended up turning into freezing even more in time in the fact that I just, I kind of wrote myself off. Um, I just stopped. I stopped thinking forward beyond a certain age. I got to age 25 and thought, well, my life is half over now. And that's how I lived. And that's a really, really unhealthy, um, that's a really unhealthy mindset. Um, besides my grandma lived into her seventies and, um, there's no reason or rhyme to put an age on this, um, especially with all of the research that is happening out there. There is no logical reason for me to think that at age 50, I will stop functioning. Um, it's just not, it's not logical, but that was my mindset. Which meant, um, you know, you can either go, I think you can either go one of two ways with this thing. And I kind of thought that I was going in the positive direction, like, you know, live my life, enjoy my life, enjoy the time that I have. But I really wasn't. Um, I stopped doing the things that, um, you know, I stopped, I stopped thinking beyond the right now I stopped thinking about the future. I stopped striving for the future. I stopped setting goals. I stopped, um, I stopped thinking about a career. I stopped, I just kind of stopped and I just did and I had no forward momentum and I was just stuck. Um, and that led to getting physically unhealthy. Um, that led to some um, I'm sure some depression and anxiety and all the while I was just fine you know I'm just fine I would go to these um, you know I would go to support groups and I was you know I'm fine I'm good yeah you know I am the master of putting on a smile and just being fine for everybody um, and so fast forward um, through you know just kind of being stuck I was just I was just stuck. The thing that I thought would free me just made me more stuck. Um, 
And then in 2018, I had a daughter. In January of 2018, I had a daughter. And I actually had major, major complications um, after my delivery, after my emergency, I had an emergency C-section. Um, and I had major complications and I was, um, you know, I lost half my volume of blood. I was minutes away from emerger emergency surgery, again, after the C-section, um, and essentially bleeding out and dying. Um, obviously I did not, but that was, I think, as I started to process that, that was kind of like, um, whoa, <laughs> like you don't even, you don't even know if you have until age 50. Like, how can I sit here and count my days when I am not in control of that? Um, you know, in that time, my husband lost his, his father. Um, my father-in-law passed away um, around the time that I actually got my test results. And he was barely 50 and in the best shape of his life. And, um, you know, he, he was gone. So who am I? How can I sit here and count my days? Like, I think I know what's going to happen. Like, I look back now and it's like, are you kidding me? Um, but hindsight, right? <laughs> we all, you know, we all have hindsight. So after my daughter was born, um, and kind of processing the, um, I guess, trauma of the delivery, um, and the aftermath and that experience kind of started to give me a little perspective. Um, but then I also, I had all of a sudden this child in front of me. Um, and I remember just thinking like, if, let's just say if, if I only had 20 years to give her for her to have her mother, wouldn't I want those 20 years to be the best 20 years of her life. I remember sitting and just watching her and thinking, um, you know, what's, what's it going to be like when that time comes, <laughs> when, you know, when I start to have, um, symptoms of the disease, like what's she going to feel like? What's it going to be like? And, you know, I think a lot of that depends on what I do now. And I, there are so many things we cannot control. I cannot control when I get this, these symptoms. I cannot control what age I get them. I cannot control which ones I get. No, no person has the exact same symptoms as the next person with Huntington's. Um, but you know, all of those things are out of my control. But what about, what about what I can do? I, I can take care of myself. I can get myself in the best physical and mental shape that I possibly can in order to be strong, to fight these symptoms when they do come. And I wasn't doing that. I was, I was sitting around waiting for that disease to come. That's what I was doing. I was just sitting around waiting for it to take me. And it took having, um, having a daughter to realize that I have choices to make and I do not want her to, I don't want her to think of her mother and think of who I was then. Um, I want to show her that that I could be strong and that I did everything that I could. I want to get to that day and I want to tell her that I did everything I could to fight this disease and to be with her for as long as I possibly could. Um, and that realization 
And that mindset shift has been um, one of the most empowering, the most empowering experience um, that I have gone through. Um, and I have worked really hard since then to, um, to get into physical shape because this disease affects you physically. It affects your motor skills. Um, I've lost 50 pounds. Um, I've done so much mindset work. This disease brings on depression and anxiety. If I'm already sitting with those, what's going to happen um, when more comes? No, I'm not sitting with those. I'm working to get rid of those and I'm working to work through those. Um, so working on my mindset, um, I'm eating better because studies show, you know, studies show that fueling your body with good food helps your body stay strong and fight. And that's what I have to do. I have to prepare for a battle. I have no idea when that battle comes. And I, you know, I really hope that I have a long way until that battle comes. And like I said, I'm grateful that my family history indicates there's a good possibility that I have a while before I have to worry about that. But all those things I can do now, I need to do now. And I need to show my daughter that I did everything I could to fight this disease when it comes. So here I am, May of 2021, eight and a half years post-testing, and I want my story to help somebody else. I know that there are people out there, and you might not have, it might not be Huntington's, um, but I know that there are people out there that are in a similar position because I'm not a special snowflake. Um, I'm not, I'm not a special snowflake and I don't have superpowers. I'm just a human that found my why and clung to it. And those mindset shifts were so empowering and they've changed my life. Um, so if you have something that you are struggling with in your life, I want you to know that you can, you can do it. We can do hard things. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs> if you've stuck around this long, um, you know, I think there's so much power I really truly believe there's so much power in sharing our stories. And I believe that because so many people have impacted me by sharing their stories. Um, there's been people that have shared their, um, their personal struggles and their health journeys that have impacted my, my story and in inspired me. Um, there's people in the Huntington's community that, um, you know, there's one, extremely brave and strong woman who has shared so much of her story and done so much for this community. Um, there are so many people that in this community that have to share their stories and it's a pay it forward. Each time we share a story, I, I truly believe that we pay it forward to somebody who needs to hear it. So again, thank you for listening. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, I guess I'm going to end with um, this chart here. I know it's backwards on the screen, but it says strength is something you choose. I got this shirt, I don't know, somewhere five, six years ago. Um, and I was really excited to wear this shirt. Um, and I didn't lean into this. I didn't choose strength then. And then the shirt didn't fit. <laughs> and it hung in my closet for a long time. And now the shirt fits again. And I'm going to live this every day of my life. The good days, the bad days, the hard days, the great days. Strength is something you choose. No matter where you are listening to this, no matter what your circumstances are, you can choose strength too. Thank you.